Hello, sexy people. Are you tired of those oversold hosting companies promising the world but delivering just headaches? Sick of waiting on a Discord server for 24 hours only to have a 13 year old tell you the problem is with you? Seriously, why would a professional hosting company even use Discord for support? In this video, I will show you how to take control of your web hosting by setting up Nginx inside of Docker, inside of Linux, with SSL, replicatable on multiple systems, and hiding your private IP address from the public. No more dodgy support. Just straightforward, reliable hosting you manage yourself. Let's get started. So, currently, I am running Ubuntu 22.04 inside of Hyper-V connected to an external switch. I'm going to go through the base installation and I would like to give it a static IP address. For the IP configuration, the subnet that I'm using is my current home subnet, 10.0.0.0 and 10.0.0.4. If you're running a VPS, this can still just be the same, it'll already be assigned an IP address. But if you do want to find this out yourself, open up your command prompt and type in IP config. You'll see your IPv4 address in your default gateway. This will tell you what your network is. It might be 192.168.0.0. Subnet mask is slash 24, 255.255.255.0. 24 out of 32 bits. It's missing eight bits of addresses. Your network address is the very first address in your range. 192.168.0.0 would be the network address. But I don't want to touch too much on that sort of stuff. I want to mainly assume that you have an Ubuntu server or you know how to set one up yourself. I might do a video in the future if people don't know how to. So the Ubuntu installation is just a matter of clicking next and entering in the correct IP addresses you want. I click the X button on the OpenSSH server. The whole point of running NGINX inside of a Docker container is so it doesn't interfere with an actual already running system. And also if you decide, oh, I don't want to set up that website anymore, you can quite easily tell Docker to remove it and it won't affect your system. I've also set this up in a way where you can manage the server yourself without having to go inside of the Docker container and know too much about Docker itself. Down in the describbles, I have linked a little file here that we'll be going through in the video and I'll be going through setting up and now this is not a script. Don't run it as a script or I will chop fingers. Maybe I'll make it a script, I don't know. And it is finally installed. I'm just going to log into my Ubuntu system to, and I'm going to run the command sudo, the first in the list, big surprise, sudo apt update. Actually, the first thing I would like to do is connect to it with SSH. Like I can then copy and paste commands. There we go, so now I'm gonna go sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade dash y. Okay, once you're on an updated Ubuntu system, this one again is running 22.04. We just have to go through and do a few commands to get started in this wonderful thing. You might already have a running system with some stuff already set up, but just in case, let's do a bit of firewall stuff with the best firewall out there. UFW, uncomplicated firewall, just the way we like it. But before that, I just want to give the server a reboot for peace of mind. Let's start off with the, the firewall. sudo ufw allow 80, go 80 slash tcp, be more specific. sudo ufw allow 443 slash tcp, sudo ufw enable. And then what I'd like to do is just clean up the ufw rules and remove the ipv6 ones. sudo ufw status numbered. Then you can go sudo ufw delete three. And if you don't want to press y, you can go echo y and pipe that to sudo ufw delete three and check that again. We get the two there. I have to allow ssh for ufw. Otherwise, when I log out and log back in now, it just won't work. What I like to do is allow specifically ssh from tcp but only from an IP address. I'm going to do a video in the future about setting up SSH securely. But for now, this is a pretty nice way of doing it. sudo ufw allow from your source IP address. So my, my source IP address is the one for the computer, 10.0.0.88. You might need to find your computer's IP address if you're connecting remotely to any port 22 proto TCP. And then from there, you can actually SSH into it. Let's go sudo soon now. And then we have the wonderful dependencies. I've copied this from my caching server script. Your apt install, and I'm just gonna copy and paste it. For the Docker install script, I followed this website here for the actual Docker. There's some really useful stuff. I was gonna set it up manually through these commands, but they have their own script for running it, which is just down here. So we're gonna be running this. If you wanna uninstall Docker, there's even information down the bottom a little bit more about uninstalling it. For now, we just have these two commands. Um, Actually, I've gotta edit this and remove the default dry run. There we go. 
And now I'm gonna run the script, not as the root user, and then sudo sh docker. Okay, that's done. Let's do our certificate now for the SSL. You are going to need a domain. This costs about $15 a year for a basic domain. Yes, $15 a year. You can't run SSL without a domain. So when you have your domain, what you do, chuck that into Cloudflare, make an account on Cloudflare, add your domain name servers to the Cloudflare, and then you can manage everything through here. And you don't have to worry about the domain provider. I strongly recommend you do this and it is free. From here, you wanna know the public IP address of the server where it's running, which is my public IP address. Go to Google, type in IP, copy your IP address, and then go back to Cloudflare. Go add record. You have A, you want to put the name. I'm going to do the subdomain server. You can find the IP address in the setting to see the IP address. Tap device info below. Don't you just love Google always listening? Type the name of the server here, type your IP address and go save. Once you have that, you can run this wonderful command. There we go. Yeah, we do need to be privileged user. Option number one, enter in your email address. Go yes, go yes. I wonder if you can go no for this one. I'm not sure. You can give it a go. Oh, I think I have tried to go no on this before and it just gives you an error. If you're getting a free SSL certificate, then eh, fair enough. You'll get emailed after six months when the certificate expires. From there, you now have your SSL certificate. Let's get this thing working. Make these directories. Make sure you're not the root user here. You have the dollar sign. You can type in exit to get out of that. Make this directory. Make this one here. And then this here is just a, a little website. It's just index.html with this text inside of it. Copy this, chuck that in there. And then let's edit this file here, which uh, doesn't actually exist. This is creating the file. Copy the nginx configuration. I did control shift V there. Control X, Y, enter. And then we have the powerful command, the command you've all been waiting for the docker command what this will do is it will set the internal port as 80 and the external port as 80 so it's a bit hard to think about it but it's the systems port and the port inside the docker container same with 443 you want 80 in case somebody searches your website through port 80 and then it can auto redirect to the 443 we're going to give it a name my nginx we're going to link the local files that we have for the website to here and set the docker container to read only it'll grab whatever website we've programmed from the main system and we can just update it from the main system without going into docker it'll grab our certificate keys from the location so edc let's encrypt live and this information obviously will be different for you you'll just have to edit this part here to match it as well as the location so home slash user is what i'm using and then you have the nginx configuration the file we just made here so just edit this command to whatever suits you as well as the let's encrypt this uh, nginx configuration edit the server name and the ssl certificates within here i might make this a script down the line where you can just type it in let me know if you want that copy this big docker command and paste it in and then all you have to do is press enter but it says permission denied because we had to do sudo su first and then we paste it in and you will not actually believe but we're done that is it. That's all the steps you need to do. And it, actually, a web server should be running right now. Whoa, future Flacco here. I just want to say one thing. You need to make sure you forward ports 80 and 443 to the server that you're running if you're running it from home. If it's running inside of a VPS, then that should be open by default. I do have a separate video on my channel about troubleshooting port forwarding, but there are so many videos out there to help you out with it. Again, let me know if you need more help and I'll be sure to make a video about it. Within Cloudflare, you notice it says proxied. What Cloudflare does, Cloudflare is a proxy service so if i go to ping server.flaco.net it actually doesn't come up with the correct ip address this is a cloudflare ip address and this is the same for everybody so your private ip address is actually hidden my recommendation still don't run services from your own house but if you want to go for it uh, just try to keep your security practices as on point as possible if we go open a new tab and we go to server.flaco.net it is done. This is a public website. This is accessible to everybody now. As you can see, it's my website. I want to go through editing the website itself. If we go to LS, you see the website files here. See the websites, and then you have HTML for the actual web files, and you have index or HTML. Edit this file, that's what you need. To make it a little bit easier, open up FileZilla. It's a really lovely program for managing, and you do Control S to open your server manager, and I have the host as my IP address, my login name, and it's set to SFTP up here, and I just like saving that, because then I can just double click it, go okay. There, it's a directory for the website. HTML, if we go through to edit this, I'll send my editor to Visual Studio Code. We are now editing the website ourselves. So I have just quickly asked ChatGPT to generate a website for me. That's really funny. This is what it generated. I'm gonna paste it in, go save, close out of it, and then FileZilla should upload it. And there it is, go yes. And all I have to do is refresh it. And there's our funniest site, of course, using Comic Sans. Very, very funny. If this has been helpful for you wonderful people, go ahead and subscribe and show your love 
love for the channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day. If there's any information that changes, I'll be sure to update the description. Leave any comments for issues that you have. And if people are running into problems with this, I will more than happily make another video to get those juicy, juicy views. And I'll write a script to automate all of the, the changes and stuff like that for this. I think that will be kind of fun. For now, I'm going to say goodbye. Go check out some of my other videos. Feedback is very valuable and I might make a second one about this. Hope you all have a wonderful day. See ya.